Hello, peeps, and welcome back to Mod of Minecraft with Night Dagger and Kozak Wolf Season 4. Um, Kozak Wolf is still not feeling that well, for the for that matter, I'm not either, but I want to record tonight. I took last night off, so whatever. So, um, off camera, I did go ahead and finish my jetpack. Pretty cool stuff. The flight control on this thing is a little wonky. It's kind of like flying around with a jetpack from IC2, except with hover control. If you look down, you fly down. If you look up, well, you kind of fly up, but you have to hold space to really go up. It works, though. It gets the job done. So, this episode, I want to start working a little bit with the bees that I have outside. You can see I have an axe here that I enchanted off camera. Turned out really good. And I do have something to report before I go any further. I died while I was goofing off and actually lost some of my stuff. So I have put it back together as best I can, sacrificing some resources. How did I lose my stuff? I died near lava. It was the worst, worst possible sort of death. I lost my helmet. I lost my leggings, I lost my boots, I lost my spell book, so I had to put all of my spells back together. Um, I did not lose the sword, although I did have it on me. That was lucky. So, yeah, I lost quite a bit of stuff and had to put it back together, so I had to do a lot of mining off camera. You might notice that the trees have changed a little bit around here. I chopped down all of the vanilla trees, and I have planted a ring of trees around here. And these are all either the lime saplings that we have here, or some other sort of genetically mutated tree. I'm trying to see if we can tech up our trees a little bit, as it were. I also have the tree elizer and the bee over in this nice little chest here. And you might notice that I've switched out our saplings over here to be lime saplings. It's because I like the way the limewood works, uh, looks, as you might tell from the building I've got going over here. We'll get to this building in a minute. For right now, oh, it's raining, so the bees don't want to work. That's awesome. And I don't have a way to make it daylight until... Or I don't have a way to make it not raining until it gets to be daytime, or nighttime, so I can sleep through the night. Oh well. Sooner or later I'm going to have to make some dissipation charges. Anyway, let's get to what I want to get started with today. You might notice we've got a crap load of bees in here. And... Let me up. I need to install jump assist, I swear. There's a crap load of bees in here. There's a crap load of bees in here. No queens in here. But, yeah, we need to do something about our mounting bee problem before it becomes a huge problem. That's what we're going to get to today. We are going to start exploring some of the extra bee stuff. Now, first of all, the first item we need to craft is an apiarist database. It's crafted in a carpenter. It takes emerald, some gold, some tin, some redstone, a pane of glass, and a diamond. Well... Easily done. I have done some trading with the village just off camera, and we have 71 emeralds. Now we have 70. Grab two diamond, or a diamond, I guess. Two pieces of gold. Two pieces of tin. Two pieces of redstone. And I'm going to have to make a pane of glass. There we go. Toss all that stuff in there. We'll come over to our carpenter. By the way, I saw the railgun max overclocked. I'm starting to get used to it, and it's just far too nice to be able to kill mobs in an instant. Alright, so it was emerald, diamond, pane of glass, tin, gold, and redstone. There we go. 
Now while that crafts up, we're going to also need to make some of these apiarist machines. This you can consider to be sort of a machine block for extra bees. It's sturdy casings, redstone, copper. We're going to need quite a few of these things, so let's get some bronze. Let's get some redstone. And let's get some copper. And first of all, we'll put the recipe for the sturdy casing in here. Get eight of those. Recipe for the machine. We'll get eight of those. Awesome. By now, our APRS database is done. Let's see what we can use the APRS machine for. It's used to make a genetic machine. We will get to that in a minute. It's used to make an acclimatizer. It is used to make an APRS data bank, and it's used to make an indexer. We're going to want these last three machines right off the bat. Means I need to cook up some sand, don't I? We'll just toss five stacks of sand in the powered furnace. I need to go farm some off camera, I think. There we go. <clears throat> hmm. We're also going to need some tin because we need to make a few cans for this. Three of those cans we need to be lava cans. Oops, come back here. And three cans need to be water cans. And if we come into here and we look at the recipe for the acclimatizer, You'll find that if we toss that and that in there, we get the acclimatizer, which is a pretty awesome machine. Let's come out to our new bee warehouse and set this thing up. I'm thinking just right there. Now the acclimatizer works by charging with reds or with Buildcraft Energy first. Pretty much all of these machines use Buildcraft Energy. So you can see it's 0% charge, 0 out of 1,000 megajoules. Max input 50, max uh, usage 2.5 per tick. What you do here is you put a bee in the center, any bee, and then you put one of a couple things in here. You can put lava cans, water cans, sand, or wait, water cans, lava cans. I can't remember what the other things are but we'll have to get back to it. I know sand is one of them, but I can't remember what the last one is. Ice. Ice. That's what it is. Ice, ice, baby. Um, depending on what you put in there, it will change the bee's temperature tolerance. So if you take a look here, uh, this bee right here. Forest cultivated hybrid. Fast worker, short life, normal lifespan. Let's get ourselves a few lava cans here. And let's get ourselves a redstone energy cell. <clears throat> I think I need to make a few more of these things. Oops. Up, up, and away! I was using the railgun as a form of flight last night. That's actually what got me killed. I accidentally flew into a lava pit. Until I put my jetpack module in. Alright, let's take this bee out here. We'll put the energy cell down next to this. It's going to immediately charge. Put the bee in there, and we'll put the lava can in. Now, uh, as you can see, the little gooey there is filling up. And it's going to consume a lava can and do nothing. This machine works kind of slow, kind of fast, depending on what you're modifying. And still nothing. I think the way it works is it has a chance of working. Still nothing. We'll leave it there for a little while. Might actually put a couple more. Oops. That's, some, that's something else that tends to get me in trouble. May put a few more lava cans in there. Now, bear in mind, I am only doing this for the example. I'm not really intending to use this bee for anything. 
That's why I'm messing with it. Alright. Let's see. The next machine that we are going to need to use, or are going to need to make, pull up the APRS database here again, is the APRS databank. That's an APRS machine, redstone, the APRS database, and some glass. Now, what is the APRS database? Well, if you put it in your hotbar and right click it, it pulls up a list of everything that you have seen in the game so far. Overview, genome, this is generally what the bee prefers. Produces a string of comb once every 3.8 minutes. Climate, normal, a little bit of tolerance outside normal. Biomes, these are the biomes that it can live in by default. Resultant mutations, common plus cultivated, turns into a gelagent sometimes. Further mutations, unweary, and oh hey look, undiscovered species. So we can tell that diligent bees plus some other bees turn into some other bees. So once we have some diligence, we'll have to do some experimentation, won't we? And unweary, we can also tell. Diligent plus cultivated to turn into unweary. Forest. Further mutations. Oh, hey, look, there's some more undiscovered species that forest can turn into. A lot of them, actually. All right, so. We have our handheld version of it. So what is this APR's databank thing? Well, basically, all this thing is is a stationary version of the same thing. Since we're going to be doing most of our bee work in here, we'll just pop it down right here. As you can see, same thing. I am a bee swatter, apparently. All right. So that's two out of the first tier. Ooh, nope. Ha! Ah, that's two out of the first tier machines done. The last one required a diamond. It also required six chests. So let's go ahead and grab ourselves twelve wood. And we'll just break this down into planks in here and then over here. Six chests, diamond, APRS databank, and redstone gives you the indexer. What's the indexer? Well, this thing is an APRS best friend, if you ask me. Because basically, what this thing is... Okay, where's the pissed off enderman? I didn't look at you! Leave me alone! There he is. Come here, Mr. Enderman. Two shots for an Enderman? How nice is that? Probably should be going and collecting all of this stuff when I go on shooting rampages, but whatever. Pop the indexer down. The indexer is basically an infinite storage chest for bees. Which is absolutely awesome because I have way too many frickin' bees. Let's go ahead and throw all of these bees in here. And you can change it to sort by species, you can change it to sort by type, princesses and then drones. None. Just defaults to whatever order they were thrown in. Let's come over to here. And let's get all of these drones out of here. We'll throw these in here. Whoa, you survived that? Anyway, um, so yeah, this thing is basically just an infinite storage house for bees. Store as many bees as you want in there. As far as I know, you cannot fill it up. 
This is where we're going to store our bees from now on. As you might have guessed, the little house that I built out back is our in-progress bee workshop. Let's throw the rest of these bees in here too. If we want to look for a specific bee, oh hey look, there's our forest, and let's go ahead and sort it by species. There we go. We have a rocky, we have some marble, majestic, unweary, tropical, we have a noble drone, we have an enderman out there, and creeper, die. I don't care about the enderman, I do care about the creepers. One of them very nearly blew up some machines in here. I was over here working, and I saw him come in my screen, I hit escape, and I go, whoa! And shot him. So glad I hadn't underclocked this thing. That's part of the reason why I'm leaving it overclocked. Okay, we got all the drones. We do have some princesses in here. Let's go ahead and pull them out. Because these things were actually taking up quite a bit of space in our storage system. Oh, I see you. I see you. You saw me too, didn't you? Bang. Headshot. One other nice thing about the railgun is that the projectile speed is as near as I can tell, the speed of light. Alright, looks like we got all of them out of there. Let's go ahead and pull these bees out. Yeah, like, you don't have to try and lead things. It makes it really nice for fighting ghasts. Because, oh, a ghast, I don't have to lead him, I don't have to do anything, just but whoa, bang, he's dead. That's a... Oh, I didn't mean to shoot him. I meant to shoot the Hecate. All of these light mages out here. Yeah, see the dark mage out there? <coughs> it's out of range, barely. Bang. Now he's not. Swift, instant, long-range death. I love it. Okay, let's come up here and sleep. How did you get in here? You may not rest. There are monsters nearby. That's awesome. Hey, screw you. I also installed the shock absorber module to my boots. I have to say, I am so glad that last night when I died, I did it before I built the jetpack module. Because that would have sucked. Oh, hi. It's said These things can actually survive a surprising amount of hits, too. Why don't you try and run from me? Oh, he gave me an ender pearl. How nice of him. Oh, wait, what? That's a dangerous place to be, Mr. Cow. You could fall down. You know that? Oh, 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 oh. Accept your fate. Embrace your fates. Come on. What? Oh, and fall down. By the way, bro, bro, bro. There. Damn it. I didn't want to use my railgun. I just wanted to push him. He had to be difficult. Had to be difficult. Alright. I'm getting distracted. 
let's not get distracted because I want to actually be able to finish some stuff this episode. Um, now we need a genetic machine. It is an APRS machine, some iron, a piece of lapis, and a basic circuit board. Basic circuit board is tin and redstone and a carpenter. Let's see, tin. Actually, we need some iron too, so that works. So I'll find iron. There's our tin. Need some lapis. Need some redstone, but I should have some in here. Good. And let's erase the recipe for the APR's databank and put in the recipe for the basic circuit board. And we'll just let that cook a few up. We're actually going to need a couple of these machines before we're done. So I'm just going to make a few of them. And these are ridiculously fast to build anyway. There we go. Pop that in, pop that in, pop that in, and bam, three genetic machines. So, what can you use a genetic machine for? Think of this as kind of an advanced machine block. You can use it to make an advanced genetic machine, which is kind of like the highly advanced ones from Greg Tech from last season, a gene pool, a sequencer, and a splicer. Well, these all sound really cool, but the big ones that we're going to be after are the gene pool, and the sequencer. In order to do this we need some glass because we need some tanks. Uses for this. Put that in there and we're just going to make up... Oh, see how this thing can get me in trouble? We're just going to make up four tanks. And we're going to pop the tanks in, we're going to pop the genetic machines in, we'll take out the copper, we need a little glass in there, and we need some gold. Not gold cable, just gold. And what are we missing? Oh, nothing. We have a gene pool. Cool. What does the gene pool do? Um, it's, let's see if we can figure out a way to put this nicely. It takes care of your B excess problem and much the same way a void pipe does. But it also kind of converts the bees into a resource. Uh, no more beating around the bush. It euthanizes bees and turns them into liquid bees, which is then used by other things. Now, I said the magic word liquid. We need a tank. Let's see what we have the most of. Well, obviously we have the most of cobblestone, but we have a lot of marble, too. So let's take eight stacks of marble, and let's go ahead and make it into marble brick. There we go. Lots of marble brick. And we're going to come over here, and we are actually going to build a tank into the side of the mountain. This, as you might guess, is a tremendous pain in the ass manually. So, one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, because we're going to take the floor out. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11. So, yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11. We need one more out. There we go. 
Dig that out. By the way, turn your jetpack off whenever you're trying to dig something out. Because even if you're standing on the ground, if your jetpack is on, it considers you'd be flying. It's kind of a pain in the ass. Now, of course, we're not going to do this manually. We're going to build a filler. Gold gears, dandelion yellow, ink sacks, landmark, chest, crafting table. Easily done. Sticks. You need eight sticks. You need eight iron. We need eight gold. Put that in there. Uses for a wood gear. It's cobblestone gear. Uses for a stone gear. Has an iron gear. Uses for those. Is a golden gear. Shape dice. No, shape crafting. Use. No, I need uses for an iron gear. Gold gear. There we go. Oops. Didn't have any iron up here, did I? That's why I had the problem. Throw the gold up there now. So we prevent the problem here. There we go. Two gold gears. We need three wood. We need a handful of lapis. We need a few more sticks. Five, to be exact. We need two ink sacks. We need two dandelion yellow. And we should have everything we need now. Alright, ooh, achievement get benchmarking. Imagine that. Alright, filler recipe in. Chest, crafting table. Need to make some landmarks. Make five of them. Landmarks. And what are we missing? That and that. Filler. Take our XX landmarks out and put all of this crap away. Uh, the genetic machine and the APRS machine we'll throw in here temporarily. And we are going to need a few bricks in the near future here. Put the lapis away. We're going to keep the glass. We're actually going to get five more stacks of glass going in the meantime. Two, three, four... Five. We're going to come over here and we're going to hijack the redstone energy cell off of that. And we're going to come out here. <clears throat> we need to dig one more down here. We're going to put a landmark there. 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 And there. Activate that. Dig out. We're going to put down our filler, which I forgot to grab, apparently. It's going to do us a lot of good in there, isn't it? We're going to pop the filler down in here, and we're going to give it the pattern for clear. Need to walk over here and grab this. There we go. As for the redstone energy cell, dig out there, pop that down, and holy crap, this thing is ripping this apart. I love how fast fillers run when they're fully powered. Just never ceases to amaze me. Let's grab a stack of stone so we can fix the roof here. Oh, we're done. Uh, 
Let's turn jetpack mode on. Fly up. Oh, we cut into kind of a room here, didn't we? That's okay. That's what I brought the patch materials for. Tag up here. It's a little thin. Whoa, hello. It's a little finicky doing this while flying. Because of the way the flight control works. But it is better than the alternative. Alright, that looks to be good. We can come in here and naturalize this a little more. Oh, hello. Bang. Yeah, we can come in here and naturalize this a little more later. But right now, I think I'm just going to break out. Let's turn the jetpack off so I can dig at a relatively decent speed. Dig out a little more of this so we can patch the floor. see how much we have left to do after we burn all this. Oh, shit. Nope, we don't want to use marble brick. That should do it. Jetpack on. Fly out. There we go. Now, we're going to use the same area, and we're going to change the pattern. We're going to change this to the walls pattern, like that. We're going to put some marble brick in here, and it's going to very quickly and efficiently build a ginormous frickin' tank for us. Or it would if we had enough resources to do it. That one's wearing chainmail. Did he drop it? No. Of course not. They never drop anything cool. Hey, you! Put that down! It's trying to steal my flower. What a bastard. Alright. We need to come back up into base and get some more marble. Uh, put the recipe for that in there, and there we go. Throw some more marble in here for it to continue building with. I love how fast this thing runs. Alright, the fact that it's not doing anything and that it's changed to red means that it's done working. Which means we can break up this and this. Let's dig ourselves a hole into here. And you can see we have a rather large room. That's probably going to be filled with mobs by the time we get back to it. We need a couple of these valves. We're also going to use some glass. We're going to tear up this wall. See how much slower it is with the jetpack on? Now, I actually probably could have left the pattern in there. Am I about to get attacked? Probably. 
I probably could have left the pattern in there and used it to fill up the glass front. I just didn't feel like it. Or, more to the point, I didn't think about it until after I would already broken it, so whatever. Come on, get, get in there. Get in there. There. Wasn't lying when I said this is a little finicky. Let's go ahead and put some glass in while we're up here. Okay, and the rest of this glass work I can do from the floor. So let's turn the jetpack off. Go put away the excess marble bricks. We'll use those at some point, I'm sure. Grab a couple more stacks of glass. valve over in this corner right here and have another one right there we're gonna have another one kind of centralized but a little off to this side right there actually we'll just have two of them there how's that look even yeah whoa scared the crap out of me If he hadn't scared me so bad, I would have tried to cure him. His loss, there. Enormous 16,000 bucket tank. Looks good to me. Let's go get that gene pool thing. And let's show you what that does. I'm also going to need a few liquid ducts. Uh, might need a redstone torch. Not sure. We are going to need the redstone energy cell, but we already got one of those out there. On the acclimatizer. Speaking of which, has that done anything? Yeah, look at that. Normal up to. Lava increases the temperature tolerance of this bee. So, whereas before he couldn't really live outside of a normal biome, now you could even put him in the nether and he would live. Let's go ahead and fill in the floor here, and over here. Let's put our gene pool in, say, why do I have two of them? Oh, for the, yeah. Let's go ahead and put our gene pool in right, say, there. And let's put in our liquiducts, give this one a wrap, dig that out, and put our redstone torch down in there. Looks good. Sorry, floating dirt was getting me. Um, what does this thing do? Well, this thing takes bees, which you can pretty much take any bee. We're going to take, to start out, let's take this guy, this little drone right here. You put him in here and supply a source of power. 
And what's it doing? Oh, no. No, Mr. V. No, he's being broken down into his base components, and bam, he is now liquid DNA. He produced a whole 100 millibuckets of DNA, so not even a bucket out of that bee. Pretty sparkly liquid. All right, so now we have a way to murder bees. Let's go ahead and murder some bees, but I'm going to do that off camera. I'm going to go through and I'm going to clean up our bee inventory. I'm not going to clean this guy up yet because he is going to come into play next episode when we start actually using the liquid DNA for stuff. So for right now, this has been Night Dagger and a friendly Enderman with Let's Play Mod of Minecraft Season 4, Episode 14 is it? Uh, I'll be back soon with Episode 15. Hopefully Kozak will be feeling well enough to join us. We'll catch you then.